Imagination of billions in Langate. A dark horse at the start of the season. Owner Dave Herrensberger, crew chief Jack Cochran, crewman Roger Clark, Warner Gardner Jr., Bill Savation, and driver Warner Gardner set the hydroplane world on their proverbial rooster tail. In April, she was christened in preparation for the first race in June, the Dixie Cup in Gunnersville, Alabama. Warner, how does the uh, new edition of Miss Eagle Electric uh, handle out there on the lake? Oh, it's a real fine boat. Uh... As you know, it's the uh, old dollar bill and the sister ship to the Notre Dame, and uh, with the new power plants and the new equipment that uh, Jack has put into this, uh, it's really come along as a real fast piece of equipment, so I look forward to uh, having a real race boat this season. Have you had any trouble with it so far on the test run? No, uh, we, we tested this morning for the first time. Everything is brand new. The boat was all refurnished, and uh, it has all new hardware in it, so... Uh, we wanted to check and see if there was any leaks in our uh, plumbing and things of that nature, but it fired up and the water this morning was running, uh, oh, probably two, three foot swells out there and we had no problem whatsoever in our shakedown run. So it, it looks as though uh, we go out this afternoon and joy ride for a little while and uh, then when we go on down to uh, Gunnersville, we'll have everything licked. Jack, what did you do to this uh, Rolls-Royce power plant to uh, change it to your own specifications? Well, it is basically all stock parts, but it's, if you rework the stuff and improve what you have there, you can make a pretty good engine out of them and put a good reliability into them. Warner, how fast uh, ultimately do you think you'll have Miss Eagle Electric up to? Well, we're we're shooting for uh, no gimmies in the boat racing, and as Jack and I discussed earlier in the season, uh, we hope that uh, to run uh, in the neighborhood of 105, 110 mile an hour laps all the while so that... Uh, this year, for one thing, uh, anybody that beats us is going to be running uh, rather quick. Uh, we like to go fast. Jack likes to build real good equipment. I like to go quick, as you well know. Yes. So uh, I look forward to real quick laps this year. Who do you see as your main contender for the Unlimited? There's going to be 15 boats. I look for about 14. <laughs> One, two, three, four. The Atomic Cup at Pasco was exciting to say the least. Here Tommy Tucker Fultz spins out the gypsy while Colonel Gardner roars on to a heat one victory.
the second heat, the Eagles scored a narrow one-second victory over the Atlas, nearly losing it when the engine quit twice. Once in the turn and right at the finish line, the Colonel hit every button in the boat and got a spurt of speed from the nitrous oxide to edge out the Atlas. This had to be one of your life. Uh, how about it, Colonel? Uh, what was it? A turn up here right by the pits, and you got her going again. Is this the same thing that happened uh, as you were coming down the finish straight away? This is right. This is right. It quits. It depends upon how I tried to keep Atlas Van Line back by not running a very uh, fast straightaway, because he can run very fast. But I was trying to conserve what fuel I pumped in the carburetor. And uh, you care to make a prediction at this point? No, no, it's going to be a real fast final. So uh, right now uh, you'll see uh, Bardall and Budweiser and the Eagle in there. And uh, the other two boats, I'm not too sure of right now, but uh, it may be Notre Dame and uh, Gypsy is out, unfortunately. They couldn't get started. I, I wanted uh, the Gypsy and, the, and Tommy Falls, who is a real fine rookie driver. And uh, he had a little tough luck. Uh, he... Uh, practically tore his boat up and ruined his engine trying to get away from another driver on the race course and uh, this in itself is uh, shows the kind of uh, sportsmanship there is in this racing business and it's a shame that uh, he's out of this but uh, he'll be back in Seattle and you can look forward to great things from Tommy and the Gypsy in Seattle. What about
Congratulations, and how do you feel? Well, a little bit tired, but real wonderful when you win a boat race from people like that. The, the greatest competition in the world right there. There's the Bardall, the Budweiser, the noted name. I mean, they're, uh, they're just the greatest competition in the world, and uh, how else can you feel when you beat all of those people? You've beat first-class equipment. Dave, congratulations, and how do you feel at this point? I'm just very happy. What more can you say? <laughs> now, the next race is the Diamond Cup, right? No, the next next race is two weeks in Seattle, right? And then the Diamond Cup. Is then the following week in, in Coeur d'Alene. We'll be home. Good enough. you have anything else to say you might uh, might want to add about uh, maybe the Bartle conking out in the last heat? Well, no, I, I, I think it would have been a case of uh, one of us having to lose an engine. Uh, there just wasn't any other way. We went into the race uh, uh, this way. Uh, my boss, Dave, here, and my crew chief, uh, when we go in the water, if the boat's riding properly, uh, we throw all the marbles in one basket and go for broke. And uh, fortunately, the boss doesn't mind if we break up his equipment. So this is the way we go. He likes to win. We like to win. And we'll win one and lose one. And uh, But when we uh, get up to Coeur Lane, we hope to take the Diamond Cup. This is our, the big one we want. Well, the water must have been pretty good because you set a new record today, a new Atomic Cup record. I'm glad you said that. I wish it had somebody out in the boat with me to prove it. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite a happy crew of the Miss Eagle Electric. All the other camps coming over and congratulating them. The crew doesn't stop though, they're still working. Washing the boat off, putting the tarp back on. Getting it ready for the next big one. The Miss Eagle Electric winner of the 1968 Atomic Cup hydroplane race here at the Columbia River. flying and I guess uh, you felt the conditions on the lake were just perfect. Well we had waited uh, a couple of days to have perfect water of course and this morning the water was just uh, ideally uh, it was cloudy, uh, the temperature was cool, the water was choppy, uh, I was very fortunate there wasn't much testing going on, the boats hadn't moved around too much so therefore the conditions of the water of course uh, were much better than it is right now. Uh, there was enough chop and no rollers in it, so it was really beautiful. And with Atlas now, he's, he's got a little sticky problem now and a few rollers. Well, Colonel, you had just a little problem in the south turn, and uh, if it hadn't have been for that, uh, you missed a couple of seconds here. Uh, we may have been well up there uh, a lot higher than 120. 
Unfortunately, uh, the uh, that's the first time that I've ever been down that straightaway that fast in my life, in the, in my history of uh, unlimited hydroplanes, or on water any anyway. Uh, and of course, when I got to the corner, I was just going too fast to go through it properly, and uh, then I readjusted. I, I felt that I was only running about 150, 160 miles an hour. I was quite surprised when I found out as fast as I was running. I, I don't run a water speed indicator, so therefore I, I can't even guesstimate how fast that I was going in the straightaway. I imagine 155, 160, but uh, we had terrific acceleration. Uh, my crew chief, Jack Cochran, does a fantastic job. I just uh, never realized what it was like to have that much horsepower. Jack said uh, without the loss of those couple seconds there, you may have been up over 123. Well, this is true. We uh, checked with the timers and... Uh, had we gone through that corner as well as we did the uh, floating bridge corner, we would have probably been around 123 miles an hour. Gardner, Spokane's Miss Eagle Electric, way out in front. My Gypsy, second place finisher in the final lap, Tommy Pulse, the driver. The apparent winner of the Seafair race, Bill Munsey, Miss U.S., in third place in the final heat. Well, Colonel, two real fine first place finishes today. Uh, what was it like out there? What's the water like and uh, how was the competition? Well, it's like everything else. Uh, when you're out in front, it's uh, a lot smoother. And uh, of course, uh, the boat runs real well. Uh, the engines were uh, real strong and uh, all in all, it was just wonderful. It's just a, a shame that I didn't get a better start in the first heat and uh, maybe the strain wouldn't have uh, showed on the small part that we have here but uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we we munched a small gearbox and uh, all in all it was a good race I sorry to hear that Jack uh, has a dislocated shoulder but it's uh, real good that uh, nothing more serious than that happened uh, maybe your head mechanic here could explain to us just what happened in that gearbox well it was just pretty rough there you know the first first heat just coming out of the water and down and just putting an abnormal load on it and just split it right in two Cost us the gearbox and, and the heat and the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, like he says, you're the boss. Uh, what's next? Are you going to go for the uh, straightaway speed record coming up this year? You got a real fast boat. Well, it's we still got a lot of boat racing to do yet. We're more concerned about that at the present time, and uh, we're getting going to get ready. We got a little work to do. Box problem that we have. one we've got to round up a gearbox for Coeur d'Alene because that's the one we want to win. You know, that's our home, and that's uh, that's the one we've been aiming for for over a year. So. The one they all wanted, the Diamond Cup, was in their hands when the Eagle lost the valve, screaming into the first turn of the last heat. It's still pretty rough. Uh, you have any idea what happened to uh, the Eagle Electric, or did you see her go down? No, I don't. I knew going into the turn, she started to fade. I didn't know if he was just going in a little slower than normal or what. Okay, congratulations to you. Thank you. Well, Dave, it's, uh, it's much more fun, of course, in the hydroplanes. Uh, you exceed the speed of sound well over 700 miles an hour in an airplane, but uh, 
You never have the same excitement that you get out of uh, driving a unlimited up around 150 miles an hour. What is the, uh, the danger element in this as contrasted to what you experienced in the Air Force? Well, I think it amounts to about the same thing. Uh, you can fly an airplane into trouble, and uh, you have to use your head in the, in the complete program of flying, of course, as we, you well know, safety is our big problem. And you do the same thing with uh, boat racing. If you drive, as we say, over our head, uh, you get in bad water, uh, too fast for conditions. I think this is where most of the problems arise. Nineteen sixty-eight and Colonel Wardner Gardner have passed into memory. But look out for the Screaming Eagle in nineteen sixty-nine. Good luck to you, Dave. <laughs> 